Mori, let me check if my sound works on uh, Facebook. So just need to go on my Facebook page, Music Tree Facebook page here and see if I'm live. I should be live. Yes, let me hear if you can hear me. Yes, all works. Perfect. Okay, so good morning everybody. How are you? I hope this is a good um, bank holiday for you. If you are in the UK, today is a day off work. So I'm starting the Music Tree Mini Guide on holiday. <laughs> and if you are in another place, I hope you're having a nice Monday, not too stressful today. Um, okay, so Music Tree Mini Guide. Um, first of all, sorry that I had to change the time of a live session, but I had some problems with my computer and the only way in which I could do it today was uh, now, basically. So let me take also this off, it's not very nice. I have to go here. The doctor. Yeah, better. <laughs> now I have a nice uh, background. This is Nick Cave, of course. Oh, are we in May? <gasps> Second of May. Who is in May? Da -da 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 -da. Nice, Stevie Wonder. Yes. So this is a wonderful calendar made by Priscilla Bay, which is an illustrator, an Italian illustrator that um, has done also all the illustrator for Music Tree website, which is um, about to be ready. And so it's a wonderful one. Last year there were a lot of women, a lot of singers, women singers, and this year is all about men. Uh, it's a nice one. Every year I have it. <laughs> Anyway, Music Tree Mini Guide starts today. And uh, the first thing is that there is a link missing, a missing link, unfortunately, the one with a song, but I'm going to teach the song here, of course, and then I'm going to send straight away an email to the whole, um, to all the people that have subscribed for the mini guide. So you can also have the PDF with a song and uh, the link to listen to the audio, okay? But let's start. And now I'm gonna play it with the ukulele and then we're gonna do it together um, slow a bit slower and I'm gonna tell you how this song was born when was it born and etc etc how to use it with kids 0 to 3 today okay so it's very simple basic do so fa these are the three chords C G and F okay so it's C, it says. <clears throat> it's called Just Like a Kite. Way up high, I can touch the sky. The world seems small when you learn to fly. Spread your wings, now it's time to try. Throw yourself into the air just like a kite. Very simple. Now we do it with pam pam pam, which is the way in which we sing songs to babies and toddlers at Music Tree, and then I'm going to explain why. Pam pam pam, param param param. Pam pam pam, param param param. Pam pam pam, param param param. Pam param 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 param. Pam pam pam, param param param. Pam pam pam, param param param. Pam pam pam, param param param. Pam param 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 param. All right. So the melody is clearly divided into two uh, different um, parts. Okay, this is the first. Pam pam pam, which always come back with this chord. Pam pam pam. Okay. It comes back with uh, after pa -dum, pa -dum, pa -dum. so there is always a part with a chord pam, 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 and then a part with some closer notes pa -dum, pa -dum, pa -dum. okay so listen let's listen again part let's call it part one pam, pam, pam. part two pa -dum, pa -dum, pa -dum. then again kind of part one different the notes but same um, idea pam, pam, pam. part two Param 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 part one. Pam pam pam. Okay, part two. Param 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 param. So pam pam pam. Param param param. Pam pam pam. 
Param, 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 pam, 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 param, 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 and then the end. Pam, param, 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 pam. Okay, so how uh, did this song uh, came up to my mind? Well, I was teaching, I was exactly teaching a class and um, I was with babies, toddlers, um, I think they were very young, like until um, 18 months old, not older than 18 months that day. And, um, and I had some parents that day that were not moving too much. I found that that specific class was a bit of a difficult class, okay? The, the kids were very focused, but the parents um, were struggling to sing much. They were all a bit uh, shy, perhaps, uh, um, new, new parents as well. So in, somehow they were not really singing much. Sorry, I was just checking. They were not singing much for, for their children, okay? So, um, ciao Gabriella, thanks for being here. So I had to find a way to involve these parents a bit more, okay? And um, the way that I, I found was to create this song that had two parts that were very clear so parents could move, literally move their babies and have something clear to do, okay? Some specific movements to do because when we teach according to the Gordon Music Learning Theory, which is the um, approach that we follow at Music Tree and that is at the basis of all our classes, uh, even for uh, older kids. Uh, when you teach music to, um, according to this uh, approach, uh, the idea is that um, you are singing for the children and you're moving for the kids, but you're moving with a flow movement, okay? And there are many different reasons why we do this. So, um, mainly because we want kids to explore with their whole body and don't feel um, that they have to repeat specific movements or that they have to imitate us, but they can really explore um, the movement and the music, sorry, the music with the movement that is the one that they feel the best for that moment, okay? Or the one that they actually can repeat, because we're talking about babies, sorry, I repeat, that they can do, okay? If there are babies and toddlers that are not able to do gestures or specific movements, so they just react to music, they just, you know, shake when they hear the sounds, or they get tense because they're listening and then they release their bodies. So in this way, their body is actually really experimenting with the sound of music, okay? And this is the main idea uh, behind this idea of having a, a flow movement that starts from the teachers. But that sometimes can be a bit complicated for the parents to understand, okay? Sometimes they are like, what should I do? Um, should I move, should I not? How do I move? So um, in my classes, after many years of teaching, I realized that it's easier sometimes to start with some ideas that are clearer for the parents. I'm not talking about gestures or specific movements, like we could think, I don't know, if you're singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, you, you would do maybe the little stars, or if you're singing Itchy Winchy Spider, you would do the spider going up the hand. Okay, so since we don't sing nursery rhymes, and we sing most, most of the song without lyrics, and, and I will tell you why. Um, <clears throat> the idea is that um, it's easier, although, to uh, suggest particular movements to the parents so they can feel a little bit more relaxed in the session, a little bit more like, okay, now I know what I can do. Um, so this song was born with this need. I had the need to suggest the movement to the parents and it couldn't come to me uh, at my mind i couldn't think about a song that was a good song for what i needed in that moment so i just improvised it <laughs> right and um so what is easier than a chord to start a song pam, pam, pam. that was what came to my mind in that moment okay pam, 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 so me do. And then I added ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, because I needed a moment where the parents could move their babies up and down. This is how the song was born. 
and I do have a little video that I posted um, in September last year with this song with my baby showing you how to use this song as with this specific idea of um, holding our babies and move the babies up and down okay in according to MLT we don't move the arms of the kids we don't move their hands to clap but we um, let them feel the beats and the rhythms of the songs mostly the, the beat through big movements through the movement of their whole body not of the limbs of the arms and the feet uh, because in that way we actually don't develop musicality the musicality comes from the movement of our whole body okay so we need to be able to balance our our weight on right left swinging um, front and backwards forward and backwards this is how we develop our our sense of rhythm jumping very very big movements okay not by hitting a drum or clapping our hands um, so Gordon did a very big research about this and it totally makes sense to me and I've seen it uh, through the years and I could actually see the results in, in very very small babies and, and, and children. Um, so I sang this song and then after many months of singing it just with pam 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 I decided that I wanted to bring this song also to older kids and I uh, asked my partner to compose the lyrics with me He's an amazing songwriter. He composes songs in like 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, this is very short, but I'm talking about, you know, more complicated songs. Um, so for this one, I asked him uh, to have, uh, I wanted to have like a nice um, idea of like growing and improving. So we, we composed these lyrics, which are about, you know, learning how to fly and feeling uh, big, feeling um, like, you know, feeling that we're learning something, that we're developing, and that we feel free like kites. Um, because I had also an Italian version, which I sing for my baby, and that was all about jumping up in the sky. And <laughs> so I wanted the same idea in English, and he helped me to put the right words for it. Um, anyway, going back to the reasons why we sing Pam Pam Pam, and we don't sing with lyrics to babies and toddlers and it's because uh, when we sing pam 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 we kind of use neutral syllables that are meaningless and because in our sessions the real goal of the class is, is musical development we don't use music to develop language okay or to support our skills although we all know from research that you know music um, engage the brain, engages the brain in such a big way that anyway there are some, um, some indirected uh, skills that get developed through just music learning, even language gets, it gets you know, supported with it. Um, so the idea is that by singing pam 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 we are using a neutral syllable and children listen just to rhythm and melody and they don't get, get distracted by the meaning of a song because our brain naturally tries to understand the lyrics of the songs. Uh, since the language is the way that our preferred way to communicate, and in that communication there might be something very important that we want to say, so our brain tries to catch the, the meaning of the lyrics anyway. Um, if you have a musical brain like mine, <laughs> you don't care about lyrics. So for me, I actually have to like really think about the lyrics that I'm listening to because my brain naturally goes to other elements of the music and the songs because I'm a daughter of two musicians. So of course my brain was, you know, really, really um, ab absorbing music the whole time. For my family, were, were almost more important the music than the language. So, um, so this is also why it makes completely sense to me that we sing without lyrics. Um, and also pam pam are sounds that babies can repeat, not babies, but um, young toddlers can repeat very easily. And they require just a little bit of hair coming out from my lungs as a b -b 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 labial sounds. And um, my baby, which is now uh, 13 months, can sing perfectly <laughs> in pitch. Uh, twinkle Twinkle Little Star, which is learned maybe mainly from the nanny, but she can also sing this pam pam pam, padam padam padam, and we can recognize that is this song because she can take the pitch 
uh, the notes and she doesn't need to be worried about the lyrics of a song she, she sang la 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 da 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 bam 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 and we know she's singing that anyway um what i suggested in the pdf it's um uh, a, a specific activity that I like to do in my classes with the parents and that goes in this way I usually sing let me see if you can hear my piano I think you can hear it but perhaps if you can tell me yes we can hear it I will just go ahead tell me if you can hear it I have a magic piano under here under my desk so what I is what I do is that I suggest the parents to stand up with the babies okay and I play exactly what I'm playing for you right now and I'm like all right everybody dance around bum, 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 ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. together in a true tree you get together to sing and play with someone else so this melody is very easy to sing and all the parents know it very well so what they do is that with their babies okay or with their toddlers um, holding their hands over toddlers they get together with another person another couple adult child and they simply stand in front of each other and they do bam 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 Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. So they make big jumps or they go closer to the other couple when there are the ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. This really doesn't need a lot of explanation. I don't have to tell them, look, you have to do it there. It's quite clear when you sing, when you listen to this melody. Bum, bum, bum. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. It's clear that you need to do it there, right? It comes very naturally. So the parents, the, the parents get together, the children in, sees each other, they observe much more the details of, of one person and of the other person, and they can also hear the voices of their parents much better. Because when you are seated in a circle, okay, they hear my voice very well, and then they hear the voice of their mom or their carer, but they cannot hear as well the voices of the other parents. And I think they're missing something because it's very nice and very important for the children to listen that all the other people are also involved in this music class. That it's not just the teacher singing for them, but that the parents are participating. And when they see the, the parents singing, then they get even more, you know, they, they absorb more, but also their engagement is much higher because the parents are their reference person in the class. We are not the reference the reference person. We are the ones that are engaging them, <laughs> entertaining them for one session once a week. But their parents are the most important thing. So if the parents are singing, there is much more engagement in the kids as well. Okay. So um, the idea is that on the padam 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 they dance together and they hear the voice of the other mom dancing and also getting together in a couple. It's an amazing way to just you know, oh wow, we're here. They are sharing a moment together. They are now two people together within the group. Instead, when, when they are all in circle, they're not really together. They are by themselves with, the other, with their kids. They interact with us. Sometimes they have a laugh maybe with the other parent, but they are so focused on the teacher during the normal session that I think that the communication is not flowing as much between the parents. Also because in our sessions, according to MLT, Music Learning Theory, we don't speak for the whole time of the class. We leave simple space to music and silence. And in the silence, there are many things going on, many things happening, which I'm not going to describe right now. <laughs> but the idea is that in that silence, 
um, children are not missing out. They are actually remembering, echoing in their minds what they have been listening to. And also they start um, creating perhaps some little sounds with their voices and we can interact with them. Okay, if we sing songs and then we clap at the end of the song, or we sing songs and uh, um, we never leave a space for a silence, they don't even have a possibility to respond to what they have been listening to. So, since we don't speak, parents don't interact as much. They don't have like the usual chat when they can say something between them, okay? They can, of course. It's not that I, we're like, no, oh, what are you doing there? But, you know, we, we kind of suggest people to, to keep the silence in the classes. Therefore, having these moments where the group is distributed in a different way within the space of a class helps them to interact in a different way. We open different kind of relationships in this way. So the song, uh, let's pretend that we're at the end. Change couple. And I sing this, okay? So the people can move around and with my chords, with a harmony, I conduct them and they know that is the time to start again, okay? So I never stop. It's the kind of a moment in the class where the music is much longer than usual. Usually the songs are like 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Then there's a space of silence, interaction with the children, repetition of a song again, space for silence, etc., etc. So the songs are the songs are very short because the attention of the children is very short as well, right? But in this particular session of my class, I want to bring up the energy. I want the people to have a lot of fun. And therefore, I just go and keep playing for two or three minutes in a row and asking the couples to change the, the, the participant of the couple, the pair, okay? So they can get to see each other. They can get to meet all the other people. And then at the end, there is another moment where the whole circle is back again, up, and they are all standing and singing, and then sit down, right? So let's, I'm going to play again for you um, the sequence of a, of a melody and, um, and, this, and the moments in which the people move around, okay? And I'm going to do it exactly as I, as I was teaching to a group of parents now. usually lasts much longer because it depends of how many couples there are in the sessions and I really want everybody to meet each other. <laughs> um, so probably you have listened how I use the harmony of my accompaniments to guide the group and give them some clues like hey the cues, cues, clues, I don't remember how to say that in English. Anyway, how to guide them with a the harmony without having to speak, without having to tell them start singing. So I go to Do, C major, when they move, then I go to F, and then with G major or G7, this is a clear dominant start, and we need to start to dance, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. okay, that is a clear cue, uh, clear idea, go, now is the moment. And the same when we are, when we are at the end, and I want to tell them, this was the last repetition. Don't start singing again. I do it in this way. Uh, or don't move to another couple, sorry. Uh, yeah, so with a 
rallentando, getting slow, rallentando, why am I saying it with his English accent, huh? rallentando, <laughs> not rallentando, <laughs> so with a rallentando, it's nice because I'm having my, a lot of fun by myself here, <laughs> so we were rallentando, rallentando, I just uh, get him slower, I just show uh, people it's the time to stop, yeah, let's do it one more time, um, pam pam pam, param param param, we're going to the end, pam pam pam, param param param, pam pararararam, pararararam, easy peasy, clear for everybody, Okay, and then at that point, everybody, I can do a gesture and everybody sit down, they have been walking around, they have been, you know, holding their babies, which sometimes are actually quite heavy. <laughs> um, so at, the, at that moment is now the moment to just sit down again and chillax a little bit. <laughs> so that moment I stand up and I go back. I can also do exactly the same and guide the group with ukulele. So if I feel that the, that group is still a little bit stiff, and they don't, um, I don't know, if they don't move much, even if the music is very clear and everything should be, you know, like guiding them towards that direction, I go with them, I go with them in the, uh, in the middle of a, of a circle, and I do exactly, oh, wow, there is my laundry here. Hello, laundry. Are you there? Good, stay there. Nice. So, what I do, I do with them in the group. space to change the couple right so this is another possibility um, I want to say something now uh, that I think is super important and then nobody really told me um, for a long time before I started teaching and it's about the distribution of the space in the space of a group that for me uh, I don't know that was changing completely my perspective as a music teacher and as a facilitator so the idea is not to use the circle all the time, but to actually engage and ask, ask the people to move around in the space um, like they are on a raft. You know, this is, is a word taken from the theater. Um, when you walk on the raft, you need to, you know, be balanced. If all the group work, walks on this part of the raft, then the raft would sink. Uh, equally, if all the groups see, walk on this part, the raft would sink. So instead, if you walk um, equally distributed on the space, um, the raft stay on, on the top of the water, right? So the idea is to ask people to walk freely in the room, and that helps them a lot to get different kinds of interactions, to explore music a bit more relaxed, because when you're walking between other people, um, you feel kind of protected. You feel like you have a filter that is protecting you. So people feel a bit less shy when they walk on the raft and explore music in that way. Okay, so um, I do have already done also webinars on this particular um, topic and if you want I can put the links for that, uh, for that webinars that I've done as well. You just ask me and I will send you a link. Um, but I've explored this, this concept through many different types of workshops before I was doing actually with circle singing and uh, body percussion. Also, I've seen it doing many different types of uh, distribution of the space by the group Musica du Circulo, which is the group where Pedro Consorte, which is going to be with us this week, uh, worked for many years and keeps working for, uh, with them. Um, so when I went to Brazil to the retreat to do um, to do body percussion and circle music, um, I've seen really how you can divide the group, move the people around in the space, and that really creates different type of interactions between the people. So that was, you know, like very open, like open my perspective and, and I said, wow, I want to do this also with babies and kids and, you know, the parents. 
So I, I've explored it and, and it really makes a difference sometimes in, in some sessions where something is not flowing very well, maybe everybody's sitting in a circle. You just switch the position, you divide the group or you ask people to move in a different way and that makes um, changes the energy completely and it's very, very useful. It's a good power tool to have as a music facilitator. So kind of the different distributions in the space of a group of people. Okay, so I have finished about this class 0 to 3 today. Tomorrow we're going to talk about how to use the same exact song with children aged 3 to 4 um, um, with different ideas and we're going to continue in this way until uh, I'm going to show you how to bring this song on melodic instruments with all the kids, okay, 7 and 8 years old. So uh, if you have any questions, I'm here for a little bit longer. Uh, I know there is a delay, so I'm just going to wait uh, for a bit um, until I can you know, understand if uh, somebody has any questions. And I, I could see that there was Andrea. Hi, Andrea, it was nice to see you. And Graziella as well, I've seen before. So yes, please let me know if you have any questions. Um, and again, sorry that there was no link for the song, but I'm going to send it straight away. <clears throat> I think there are no questions. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think I think maybe I've been talking a lot as usual and um, so there are no questions at the moment. Okay, so perfect. I'll see you tomorrow for the other um, class. We have four classes this week. And then from Wednesday, you can book your place for uh, the webinars. Actually, I might already open, I might put the links here. So you can also already book your place for the webinars that are going to happen on Saturday and Sunday. Okay. So on Saturday, we're going to talk with Pedro Consorti, which, is, which I mentioned before. And with Pedro, we're going to speak about nonviolent communication for circle music. So we're going to describe exactly these points that I told you now, some, some of these points and more. And then on Sunday, we're going to speak about body percussion for children, which I um, use with kids that are three and above. So yeah, let's, let's I'm going to put the link on the on top of this post so we can already you can already book your place okay thank you so much for being with me this morning and i'll see you tomorrow ah tomorrow is at 2 30 so in the afternoon 2 30 uk time bye bye bye